Hey everyone, welcome back to another video from A Man Talks FPL SC. Happy FPL Day. It is the night before the game week one deadline, the start of the season. Emotions are running high. I've been tinkering non-stop and I'm sure many of you could empathize with the situation, but I've kind of landed on a team I think I'm happy with for game week one. Obviously, I have to open the video as well with a caveat that the team I'm going to show could change based on press conferences for which my team actually I do need to hear some information before locking in my team. As some of you may be aware, I'm based in Australia, so the deadline is at 3.30 a.m. So there's a very strong possibility that I will not be getting any sleep tonight. And the first game is at 5 a.m. I am an Arsenal fan, so I probably will be watching that. But you know what, for FPL day, I feel like it's worth it to sacrifice sleep just for that game week one deadline. This is the best indication of what my game week one team is going to look like. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and have all kind of locked in your drafts as well. If you enjoy the video, as always, appreciate a thumbs up on the video. Do please subscribe to the channel as well if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So starting off with the goalkeepers, I have decided to switch from Daniel Backman to Robert Sanchez of Brighton and the backup goalkeeper Steele from Brighton. I thought this double up was a little bit safer. I think the fixtures for Brighton, I just couldn't really ignore them. And I think, you know, I was thinking about Backman as potentially able to get more saves, but I thought more and more about it. And I'm probably leaning towards, spoiler alert, attackers from my team who are coming up against Watford. And I thought, how much do I really want my goalkeeper coming up against them? But also, I think Brighton are just going to be a lot safer. And I, and I think for the first eight weeks of the season, their fixtures are very, very solid, which is a great time in terms of when I might be planning my wild card. And I don't like changing around the goalkeeper too much. So yes, it is very template. It's very safe. But Robert Sanchez, I think, is going to be the goalkeeper for me moving forward into the new season. Now, moving on to the defenders. Again, players who have been locked here is Alexander Arnold of Liverpool. Yep, he's not going anywhere come deadline. Luke Shaw, I think, is also quite a lock into the team with United's very good opening fixtures. He's demonstrated very good form coming into the season off the Euros, the back end of last season. And I think he's also a very, very safe pick. Simikas, an absolute gift, has fallen into our laps. The Liverpool fullback replacing Andy Robertson at 4.0 million. Look, I was never really considering Diogo Jota for my team. So for that reason, I'm happy to go with Simikas because I don't mind that he takes up my third Liverpool spot. Yes, he is potentially a risk, and I think the reports are that he'll be good for about the first three game weeks. Come game week four, which is after the international break, is when Robertson is expected to come back. But he's 4.0, to be honest. I just don't want to overthink this one. He's a 4.0 Liverpool fullback with great fixtures to begin the season. He's going into my team. And against Norwich, I think he has to be played as well. You'll notice on my bench there, I've actually got Soufal and Luke Ayling. Um, it's probably a bit more of an expensive bench than I traditionally go for, but this is also keeping in mind that I expect Simicast to drop out of the Liverpool team. And also in that game week three against Chelsea, I'm not expecting to play both of my Liverpool defenders. I will probably rotate out Simicast and that therefore Soufal will be able to be played. And so I don't actually mind it as a good defender rotation. And I think Soufal himself is a good long-term pick. And I'm really liking his attacking stats and his go for it. He ended last season really, really strongly. So yeah, Soufal on the bench, I don't mind for this week because I do expect Newcastle to actually score against them. But they've got really nice fixtures after that. And Luke Ayling, again, he's just a good 4.5 million defender who has got some attacking threat. We didn't see it last season, but hopefully it does go into his favor this season. And from game week five, Leeds have a really, really nice run of fixtures. So I'm very happy to have Luke Ayling sitting on the bench there. Um, he can perfectly replace Simicast when he drops out of the Liverpool team. Uh, and Luke Ayling can rotate in nicely with the squad as well. So yeah, overall, I'm pretty set, I think, on this defense. Now, the midfield is where things start to get interesting. I mean, Salah, Fernandez, and Son, to be honest, I think they're going to be absolute locks in my team. Um, Salah and Fernandez, as the two premium big hitters in midfield that I think a lot of teams are going for, don't really need to say too much about either of these two. I mean, great fixtures for the pair of them. They're super consistent, amazing FPL options, you know, captaincy options as well. Son is a bit of a bigger talking point because I see a lot of teams don't have him and for fair reason because people have question marks over Spurs and how they're going to attack without Harry Kane in the team and just the general environment over there, it does seem a bit unsettled. For me personally, I think Son at 10.0 is someone I just think is going to deliver the points regardless of Harry Kane being there or not. If Harry Kane's there, great. Son has got his right hand man who can deliver him assists and able to get great chances for him. If Kane's not there, Son's going to be leading the line as a penalty taker. So for me, I just see both situations as okay for Son and I think at 10.0, he offers good value, and I think he's a good price point as well, and that, you know, if there are other midfielders that do really, really well, like, you know, Riyad Mahrez or Jack Grealish, you know, players under him, it does make it easy to go to them if Son, is, say, isn't delivering the goods. Yes, it is a tough fixture against Manchester City in game week one, but I think this is the, probably the best time to be playing them in the first week of the season when they're not fully sharp. They haven't got all of their squad. Scott Son actually does fairly well against them in the past. He has scored quite a few times against them, so I'm happy enough to have Son. And then in game weeks two, three, and four, 
amazing fixtures. Game week three against Watford, I think he probably will be my captain. He's also a captaincy option in game week four. You know, I might not captain him in game week four, but I see it as well. It's a player who I think is going to be a good captaincy shout. Therefore, I think he's probably a good player to have in the team. So Son, he's going to be in there as well. Buendia and Smith Rowe are two midfield positions I'm still not 100% certain on. Buendia definitely will rely on the press conferences because I do want some uh, Aston Villa attacking coverage with those three great fixtures to begin the season. And if Buendia is past fit, I'm happy enough to go with him as opposed to, say, a Rafinha at 6.5 million as well, mainly because I just want to target those first three fixtures and I can easily swap to a Rafinha once Aston Villa have kind of gone through their easy patch and start getting into some rough fixtures because that's around the time when Leeds come into a good run of fixtures themselves. So I'm happy enough to have Buendia from the beginning if he is past fit just to get some cover for the Aston Villa attack and then switch to Rafinha. Obviously, Rafinha is going to be probably the more popular option at 6.5 million and for good reason. He's an amazing player with great stats and a great attacking team in Leeds, but I'm happy enough to bet on the better fixtures for Buendia at the start of the season uh, opposed to Rafinha. Smith Rowe is just one of the kind of long-term options who can just sit in the team at a very very low price point at 5.5 mil. Very mixed bag in the mu- in the first month of the season. You know, you've got Brentford and Norwich, amazing, but then you've got Chelsea and Man City. But with the way that my squad is set up, I can easily bench him for Chelsea and Man City in replacement of like a Sufal. So I have looked ahead in the first couple of weeks. I'm able to do that rotation okay. So I don't mind having Smith Rowe on the bench in those two game weeks. And I think from game week four, Arsenal's fixtures are very, very strong. So I'm happy enough to have him there. He's not so expensive that I don't mind him being on my bench. Uh, and he can be in place there from that game week four run, which turns very nicely for Arsenal. But as I mentioned, I am still questioning these two positions. You know, you know, I could drop Smith Rowe down to a 4.5 like a Josh Brownhill or a Billy Gilmore. I could upgrade Buendia to like a 7.5. So I had Mason Greenwood, for example, as was in my last video. And I think he's a great option to begin the season as well. You know, if you're looking for some Man City coverage, you could you could go for Gundogan at 7.5, who has shown to be a very, very good option when KDB is not in the team. So that is something I'm also thinking about. But I kind of weighed up as Gundogan and a 4.5 versus Buendia and a Smith Rowe. I would probably favor the Buendia and Smith Rowe. And as I mentioned, gives me a nice... Uh, entry point into the Aston Villa attack. Now the two strikers that I've gone for in this 3-5-2 formation is Mikel Antonio of West Ham and Ivan Tony of Brentford. Antonio is probably again one of these players who is a lock in my team. I just love his preseason form. He's just when he plays he just scores goals. Obviously the big concern with him is injury but you know I'm willing to forego that because because if he gets injured we'll just have to transfer him out. There's no real two ways about it but while he's fit and playing, I want him in my team. And West Ham have got very good fixtures in Newcastle, Leicester, Crystal Palace, and Southampton in the first month. So I can definitely go with him to begin the season with great confidence. Ivan Tony, bit more of one that I've been debating because at 6.5 million, he is probably the best value striker. Obviously, the concern is how well is Brentford going to do coming up from the championship and Tony himself. The run of games for them are not too bad. You know, you've got Arsenal, Crystal Palace, Aston Villa, and Brighton. So a bit up and down. But as I mentioned in my previous video, the reason I like Tony is that he just seems like a real confidence player. Uh, from all the reports that I've heard, Brentford are quite an attacking team themselves. So for that reason, I think they're just going to go for it. You know, they're in the Premier League now, play, especially playing the first game of the season um, at home against Arsenal. I really feel like Ivan Tony is going to get something. I've just got a feeling about that. So I really like Tony in the team. Obviously, the big omission here is Danny Ings because he was in my last draft and he also looks a great option at 8 million to lead the line for Villa. Based on what I've heard in terms of the Villa setup, it looks like they're going to be doing a 4 4 2, which would see Danny Ings and Ollie Watkins um, leading the front line for Villa. You would expect Ings to have penalties, although El Ghazi did take the penalty in the preseason match last week. So maybe there is some slight concern. The reason I've got the team set up this way with Buendia is that if I ultimately don't end up going for Danny Ings, I can just easily um, have Buendia as some Aston Villa coverage because I feel having no Aston Villa coverage is a bit of a risk. Obviously, a lot of teams are going with uh, Antonio, Tony and Ings front line. I have had some drafts which have had that set up, but at the moment, this is how I've set up. This is my 3-5-2 formation to begin the season. I've got a random 4.5 striker. None of them are really going to be playing, but overall, I'm quite happy with the squad. I've mapped it out for the next few weeks, and they do seem to rotate well, and I hopefully don't need to make any transfers up until that game week three, uh, at which point we can kind of assess a little bit better who, which players are performing, which teams are performing quite well, and then we'll hopefully have the two free transfers up our sleeve to, to be able to change up the team. In terms of the captaincy, Mo Salah hasn't changed and he is going to be getting the armband of 100% against Norwich. He hasn't scored any goals in preseason, but apparently this was the case last season and then he scored a hat-trick in the first game week of the season. I had him captain last season and obviously that did really, really well for me. So I'm repaying the faith again with Mo Salah. So if you guys want to see what the team I'm most likely to go with, 
this is going to be it. What I will now get into is actually some alternate drafts of teams that I've been thinking about um, fielding as well. So if you guys are interested, do stick around for that. So this is a 4-3-3 I have played around with if I really wanted to get Danny Ings into my team but also maintain that really strong midfield. A 4-3-3 was probably the best way to do it. I did have to sacrifice Sufal for instead two 4.5s. So I've gone for a Veltman and a Luke Ayling. And I've had to have two 4.5 midfielders in Josh Brownhill and Billy Gilmore. But I look at that front six and I think this is amazing. The only downside I feel with this formation is the inflexibility because, for example, if there's a midfielder, say, around the 6 to 7.5 or 8 mil price bracket, but say Son is performing well, there's no real easy way to get to it apart from, say, having to transfer out one of my forwards, which is not obviously a bad thing. And in terms of the bench with this one, all three of the bench play. So that's not horrible. It just doesn't feel as flexible as it potentially could be. And I really think midfield has got a lot of good options. So just going with the three does seem like a bit of a risk. But if I really, really wanted Danny Ings and I wanted to maintain that midfield, this is how I would probably line up that way. Now, this is a draft where I'd have to kind of weigh up if Ivan Tony was the one I wanted to have in the squad or, say, a Rafinha. So this has Danny Ings and Antonio leading the line with Rafinha as a 6.5 million in replacement of Buendia, but no Ivan Tony, as I mentioned. So this 4-4-2, again, is not too bad. The bench is slightly weaker in this instance, obviously, because we've got that 4.5 million striker who's not going to be playing. Again, I really like this team if you're really, really big on Danny Ings, who's obviously super popular. So I have definitely toyed up going with this draft as well. But again, this is one of the other options that probably I would have maybe slightly below that first team that I revealed. For me, I would probably likely sway towards this draft is if, say, Emi Buendia wasn't past fit, because then I'd feel like I really need to get some kind of Aston Villa coverage. Obviously, I could go for Oli Watkins still, and that would that would save 0.5 mil. And then I, I could upgrade then Veltman to a Sufal. So there's definitely some a, li a little bit of flexibility in this draft as well. But again, I'm not 100% sure on it right now. Right guys, that is my Game Week 1 team reveal and Game Week 1 team selection. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys have a great Game Week 1 and a successful FPL season. Of course, I have to caveat again that none of these are final until I hear some press conferences and I finally make up my mind. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. As always, do appreciate a thumbs up. Do please subscribe to the channel as well. Let me know in the comments below your drafts, any questions you may have, any thoughts about my drafts as well would obviously be appreciated as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video.